Hello folks, welcome back to another video. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to upload for a few days, but you know, I I just like, when certain subjects come up and stuff, I have to talk about them. And uh, so I figured uh, you guys will probably be seeing this tonight on Monday night, uh, probably after dinner time. So anyways, I wanted to uh, go over and critique a video that, uh, that Hannibal is Hungry's channel did. And recently... Um, Aaron from Uberlift Phoenix did a video on is gig work temporary, right? And I critiqued that and I gave you a whole bunch of scenarios and everything of what, what my knowledge tells me is going to happen and stuff. But, you know, can we completely predict the actual outcome of the future folks? Well, that's all up to God, really. It comes down to that. But with that said, you know, it's good to get different views and perspectives and stuff like that. Um, mine happens to be from a biblical perspective most of the time because uh, I know some stuff that other people don't know. So you could talk, you could say, well, you're talking from, a, um, from knowledge and experience, you know, and different things. And that's with anything. But so this video, actually, I thought it was very well done. I think Hannibal did an awesome job on it. He's very articulate and very very eloquent the way he does the video. And I like the points that he hit in the, in this video because they're all they're all different points that make a lot of sense that I'm and I'm glad that that Hannibal did this because he's he's a larger channel. He's get he's growing and I like him. I like his channel and um I'm glad people uh I'm I'm glad the message is getting out there about the fact that <clears throat> that this work is not going to really be full time for people down the road, because. Uh, but with that said, you know if people would do their part to try to change the system, which is very hard to do because it's controlled. If we could do those things, then maybe positive change could happen, and I'm always for positive change. Um, you know, I, I love the comments that people write in these videos because, uh, you know, I want to get your perspective on things too, folks. You know, um, I don't have all the answers. I have some of the answers. But as a community, you know, I think where a lot of us are divided on certain subjects and things. And, and that's what, you know, but when it all comes down and said and done, we're out here to try to make money for whatever we're making the money for. You could be a part-timer that wants to go and buy a, a guitar or a drum set or something, a musician, and you're only doing it part-time to do that. Or you could be trying to save for a vacation. So you go out every day, you work an hour or two, and you throw the money into an account, and then at the end of the year, you go on a vacation. But someone like me who's full-time, I have to come out and be out here all day long. And, and look, there's many reasons why we all do it. One of the reasons I do it is because I like to be my own boss. I like to be out on my own. But that comes with a lot of pain, suffering, and misery. <laughs> because, like, you know, I don't have to explain to you guys how, how it can be rough and how many hours you got to put in weekly, okay? And then you have an extreme uh, working situation where Aaron from Uberlift Phoenix, which is excellent, he saves up a whole lot of money, works his ass off, takes the summers off. <laughs> But he has a good market he's in, too. And that that's also, everything's variable. There's so many variables. So, with that said, let's go right into this video. I'm going to try to crit critique it a little, but I agree with a lot of things that Hannibal has to say in here. And, um, and then, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. But uh, I already watched the video, so now I'm playing it through to critique it. And I just think he did a really good job. He, had, he hit a whole lot of points in here. Can I do DoorDash? for the foreseeable future can i retire doing doordash can it be 2055 and i'm still doing doordash we're going to talk about it so it's been quite a discussion the last couple of days started with uber left phoenix asking the question is gig work only temporary and it all depends on the person obviously but uber left phoenix he's doing great with gig work gig work is something he's going to be doing permanently my full income has been gig work for going on six years now since I quit the real job, I've completely paid off my house. I only pay cash for my cars. You know, I max out my Roth IRA to the maximum contribution you're allowed to put into it. So far, it's been better. I cannot see myself leaving this line of work. And when I 
finally quit the job that was tying me down. During that time off, I'm like, oh, I can't stop doing this. There's no way I'm going to be able to, to let this go. I got to keep doing this. This is an awesome way to work this thing. And my boy, my good friend Pedro Dordash Santiago, has been preaching the idea of using these apps as stepping stones to achieve other things or better things. I do believe it's a really, really, really good option for many people. And I think that's why a lot of people came to it during the pandemic. A lot of people are going to come to it in 2023 in record numbers in my uh -huh. Well, I got I to gotta interrupt there. You're, you're going to see more people. It, it, it'll get so watered down that it's going to be a revolving door that some people won't even be going out to try to work it. Because when in the future, when it gets so, so saturated that you have to sit an hour to two to three hours to get one job, one thing sent to you, then those people will either delete the app from their phone or they'll just not even sign in anymore and do it or they'll sign in occasionally to see if they can get one or two here and there. But the focus won't be on the gig apps plus the fact of what they're going to be doing is bringing in the autonomous vehicles in the future and the robotics and everything. The whole gig system, the whole gig community is going to change. With the exception of some gig apps like animal walk walking apps and things like that. <clears throat> you know, we walk dogs and actually Hannibal's going to mention that in this video here about dog walking and stuff. Here we go. Because when people are struggling, it's an easy way to get on an app and make a quick buck. But in my opinion, that is the vast majority of people that do this work do it extremely part-time and for a short amount of time. Now, one last thing I'll say, I mean, <laughs> about what Pedro said. When Pedro started his channel, when he first got on, he was looking at the whole gig at gig app community that hey if you're a full-timer or you're someone who wants to do this full-time you absolutely could do this full-time i mean you could just do this forever all right and then he said oh and if you're part-time you can do this part-time he used to preach that originally when his channel first started it wasn't all about you know set goals one day at a time bet on you that came later on i mean you could go back and watch his original videos folks no, I'm not attacking Pedro. He, he He's changing with the times. I get it. But I'm glad that channels are talking about the fact that you can't do this full time really in the future. And it's only for a very few people, especially when all of those automation systems come in. It's going to be wonderful. And what's even more delicious about the whole situation, which is the stu stupendous uh, finale of the whole thing, is that when they finally make everyone a permanent employee forever and ever and there's no more independence that's when you're going to see the masses of people exiting from the gig apps and they will leave and you'll only have very few people who are who are desperate enough to stay with that situation because see the government's going to come in with the hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution the companies create the problem the people react and then the government comes in to be the the salvation of the problem. And end of story, right? <clears throat> because they're in bed together, folks. The whole the whole scene of corporatism and fas fascism, which is corporatism and communism and Marxism, is is all rampant, rampant through all of these corporation companies. So that's what you really need to know. All right, continuing here. So, is it worth, is it sustainable to quit a W-2, stop working, and come into this space and do it full-time and think that you'll be able to do that long-term? Absolutely not. So, we have this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, I'm glad he's telling the truth. He, I mean, he's literally, you know, he's absolutely correct. Because, you see, Pedro sees, I mean, he's lucky he was able to establish his channel when he did, like, in other words, get a foothold and to kind of do those other things he wants to do. Because anyone coming in trying to start a new YouTube channel about how you can make money on DoorDash is going to find themselves not making very much money about DoorDash, especially when all of the newbies find out that they've been lied to about how you can make all kinds of money with DoorDash. It's a complete lie. It's actually what it really is, folks, is a pyramid scheme. 
We are under a pyramid scheme where only the very few at the top and the people who kiss ass will get rewarded. The rest of the pe peons get all the crumbs and get nothing at the bottom. All right, now let's continue with, pe with um, Hannibal. Bit of a debate here. Should food delivery apps and rideshare apps only be mostly considered a stepping stone for something else? I made this community post about a day ago. Do you think food delivery and rideshare apps should be mostly considered a stepping stone to something else? And 78% of you said yes. So I think most of us do believe that these apps are very helpful, extremely helpful tool to either save for something, pay off something, or just have a little bit more money in your pocket. Now that's true as we are in 2023 but if you go back to 2012 and 2013 and 2014 even ask i mean look at uber lift phoenix he'll tell you he was making a ton of money even back then especially with rideshare because there was hardly any delivery apps back then i mean there was a couple of them but they were localized out in like california out the, out west really and um you know, then they expanded. They were testing it out in uh, in San Francisco and everything. And I remember I used to bump into people, like, talking to people. And I'm like, hey, what do you do for work? And I wasn't doing that gig work then. I was working as an engineer. So I, I had a W-2, you know. But, like, I remember people going, oh, man, I'm making, like, $2,500, $3,000 a week and everything. Because they were doing all these bonus programs and everything. And they were recruiting everyone. And they were giving all kinds of payouts and everything and this is the early days of it so there was a lot of people who did it full time they were doing the, the work full time they they quit their jobs back then to go and do it because they were making three to four to five times the amount i mean there was people making to over two hundred thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year doing rideshare when it when it first came out because of the programs uh, and then that's then it started to decline. And when people saw that they could make that money, then more and more people were jumping on. And now it's it's there's no way you can sustain <clears throat> full time really f for the long term. For right now, you can, but you have to break your balls to get the money. You got to work sixty to a hundred hours a week to get mediocre money, and running your car into the ground. <laughs> and you can use those resources. <clears throat> as a stepping stone to something else. Now, let's take a step back and talk about the gig economy as a whole. I think the gig economy is going to grow and it's not just the food delivery and rideshare apps. There's tons of gig economy jobs that will continue to be there. There are many jobs that you can do long-term. For instance, I am a dog walker, I do pet care. So I can do this gig work forever. You're always gonna find people that need someone to take care of the dog. Either by yeah, and here's, but here's, and I agree with Hannibal, that's cool, but here's the thing about it, is I, I, instead of going through an app, why don't you do your own business? Like, for instance, the new thing that I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you straight out, I'm going to be putting ads out on, like, Craigslist and other things, so I can do my own dog walking, do my own thing, and charge my own rates. Now, of course, that will get competitive, because there'll be other people that'll do it. Some people don't like animals or dogs. I love them. I actually work with horses part-time. So, um, you know, there's lots of things you could do, folks. Lots of things you could do to try to change your situation. And usually when you when you get a client that likes you then and they, and they like what you do, then they might even have uh, references to someone else. And once they have you locked in to what they like, there's no need for them to go and look for any other services. So why go through the apps when you can do it yourself? See, with, with Rideshare, you, you really, you can do your own business, but it takes a lot of overhead because you got to, you got to uh, buy, buy vehicles and all this stuff. When you, if you're doing like animal care or something like that, or medical career or something like that. I mean, well, that would be hard too because you'd have to set it all up, you know, on the side. But there's certain things that you can bypass instead of going through an app. Why give a middleman the money that you should be making? 
Why give them, why should you only get a cut or an hourly rate? Because the same thing with those dog walking apps and stuff, unless you can charge your own rates, right, then it's not good. Okay, now I haven't got into those apps. I am probably going to try them <clears throat> because, but I'm going to do my own thing. Or I might even do a hybrid. I might do some of that to get clients. And then once you get the client, you can just tell them, hey, listen, I, would you like to not get charged those fees that the company is charging you and you can just pay me straight and then have them come off the app? That's all. You know what I mean? There's ways around it, folks. There is. All right, let's continue with Hannibal. Walking them or taking care of them for a few days. So that <coughs> industry is pretty strong and you can probably do it long term, especially if you're able to choose your rates, that you'll be able to adjust for inflation. There's also other gig economy jobs, freelance writing, tutoring, being a mechanic, there's so many other jobs in the gig economy that, of course, they'll still be there. And you can do it long term. But we talking about the food delivery and ride shared apps. And these apps have exploded over the last 10 years. People were able to do amazing things from these gig apps. I am one of them. I think all the content creators in this space are grateful for the apps, despite the criticisms. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with that. I, I definitely would agree with that. I mean, if it wasn't for the apps, we wouldn't be able to do them, right? But it's also a symbiotic relationship <clears throat> where without the drivers or without the person doing the apps, then the companies could not exist, no matter what it is, right? But the thing is, though, is that we need to start, we need, if we really truly want to be independent of, of, other other things that are going on we need to be able to do our own things make our own niches and our own markets for what we want to do or what i mean by markets is create a, a system of need or want like whatever service it would be and not having to rely on some big conglomerate corporation to try to make make that happen do it on our own, have our own abilities to do stuff rather than have to rely on apps. Okay. Because of the, because of the greed and the corruption that it breeds, because once a company, even a company who draws you in <clears throat> to an app, right, might treat you real well at first or give you all kinds of wonderful money. And then they slowly pull away that until you're like now at the point that you're begging to uh, like uh, you can hardly make any money. I mean, <clears throat> it's 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 a tough situation, folks. I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on all of the apps. I would be doing my own thing as well, which you can. You just have to think of an idea, that's all. But at the same time, there are a lot of advantages for the apps. Obviously, the ability to work when you want to. You can as hustle as hard or as little as you want to. And I think people who do really well with the gig apps, they use the experience, use the ability to network, use the experience to talk to other businesses as a stepping stone to find what else is out there. What other opportunities can be attained from using the food delivery and rideshare apps? Going back to the question, should you do this long term? And I know there's separation between full-time drivers and part-time drivers. I would say, regardless of you use this as a stepping stone or not, you should always have the apps around. Why not? Even Pedro that says, use these apps as a stepping stone. I don't think he would ever advocate to delete the app entirely. It's just the idea that you want to make sure you have more solid, sustainable streams of income. We can which, which you cannot, for the 95% of us, cannot do. Now, remember, folks, where are mo and, and let me just say this: Where are most of the people centralized in the United States? Where, like, where do you have any idea where everyone is? Most people are either on the East Coast or the West Coast. <clears throat> then, in the middle states, it's all sparsely populated. Okay, in in cities, it's populated, but cities is where most people. Well, where a lot of people are. But then there's a lot of people out in the rural areas. In the rural area, people are the ones who are suffering that cannot make a living with the gig apps because while I'm actually making this video, I'm in a completely different area. I'm, I'm 35, 40 miles, actually, I'm 45 miles away from where my area is to go out to try to, to see what it's like. This is on a Monday that I'm making this video. And, uh, I'm ready after this video. I'm going to be going back online to uh, to drive. 
because I want to see what other areas are, uh, what it's like. Um, and it, and does that depend? Is it market specific? Is does it depend on the day, the time of night? Yeah, every everything's a factor, but the number one factor is the fact that there are too many drivers. And let me just say one last thing, and we'll go right back into the video, is that when you're in a market where you're not getting multiple, like, stacked orders at least offered to you, then you know that the market is saturated because you're going to tell me that the a driver who goes in to pick up an order is not capable of actually delivering four or five deliveries all at all in the same time, going in the same way. You know, in other words, if it was lined up correctly, that driver could probably drop off five deliveries in a row and make a killing, right? But but they won't do that because they have to satisfy someone else who's on the app so they won't delete or uninstall their app saying, this app sucks, I'm not making any money. So what they do is they string everyone along and they give them only just a few breadcrumbs to keep following the trail that with the hopes that you're going to make a decent wage at the end of the day. But look at your gas, look at the time you're in your car, look at all these things. And this is just for the driving apps, the ride share and, and, and uh, delivery. You know, Hannibal's talking about other apps and there's way other, way more other apps. But what I'm saying is, is they're all tied together in the same, same mindset to keep everyone making just mediocre money and never enough to prosper and 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 go forward you know all right let's let's continue uh relying <clears throat> on the gig apps because in my opinion it is ideal for you to have a main source of income that is not that's not predicated on the gig apps all right well i tend to agree with you on that one because it's obviously the gig apps are showing their colors these days and we can't really rely on them anymore so we are, i i even tell people on my channel you know you better start looking for a w2 somewhere or get into some skill thing because it's better to be on the side of secureness if you have any secure job and have these as a part-time thing rather than trying to chase it full-time because the way that these apps are going they could care less about anyone they do not care about you folks but also use the gig apps as a true side hustle so you're always going to be in a comfortable position that's why most of us that do full-time gig work have so many different apps we have so many other ways to make money because we've been here long enough to understand that the ups and downs are going to be embedded within the gig economy and as things get a little bit more volatile in the next couple of months you want to make sure that you have several backup plans to make sure you're doing well now let, let me let me just say something else too uh like instacart and any of the apps that you have to go and shop and pay for as the food shortages keep continuing to come in, <clears throat> we have things like, for instance, I went into a store earlier to look at cat food, and there was hardly any cat food on the uh, on the shelf. I mean, even the bags of dry food were missing, right? So what what if you're on a order where the person wants cat food, and you go in, right, and they, and they don't have what they want, and all of this stuff, right? What it ends up happening? The customer will give that person a bad rating, or you won't make enough money on that. Uh, order that you were originally offered because things were missing out of it and blah, blah, blah. And so that's the reason why I stay away from the shop and pay orders, unless they were really small, like five or six items or something like that. And it's easy to get like milk, bread, you know, something, you know, that's always pretty much going to be in the store, but those food shortages are going to affect the gig economy too, in a delivering situation. If you're walking dogs on a dog app, that's different. You know, you don't have to worry about much. <clears throat> but you remember how I told you folks that everything's tied into everything. If there's no dog or cat food, how are the dogs and the cats going to eat, right? <laughs> how are you going to take care of them and feed them? I mean, wink, wink. Anyways, continuing. <laughs> right, let's talk about the disadvantages of the gig apps. And again, we're talking about food delivery and ride chip. So right now, the pay can be low compared to where you are. So in certain markets, the pay is too low. Saturation is oh, yeah. overwhelming. Big time. Big time low. And that's on purpose, folks. <laughs> There's a lack of stability and income. You're yep. running your car into the ground. It's just that's the way to business. You got to deal with potential accidents. Yep. That could be damaging to the car. How about, how about parking tickets when you try to park 
in a busy zone that says no stopping, no loading, and you go in and you come out and there's a nice $50 ticket, parking ticket. That's why a lot of people stay away from the cities because of, because of that reason. Because the cities are money hungry and they're trying to grab from you with all of that. In yourself, if there's a limited growth opportunities, if you are a DoorDash driver, you're not going to be able to advance to be executive at DoorDash unless you have the acquired skills and experience to do that. So there's a ceiling of earnings. You only one person with one. Oh, ceiling of earnings is true, Hannibal. They're throttling everyone back. And they're always, and they are changing up the algorithms. Like, for instance, it might be that, okay, they're going to enact the top dasher and they're going to make it work that way. And then three weeks later, they change it again because they get everyone chasing the carrot on the stick. Then when you find the carrot and you finally bite into it, then all of a sudden the algorithms change and you get screwed again. <laughs> There's a cap on how much money you could potentially earn. Some days you'll do phenomenal, but there's some days you're not. It's oh. an ebb and flow. You're only one person, and there's a limit to how much money you can earn. The apps with the algorithms constantly changing, the way they gamify the system, the way they manipulate, trying to get people to take more offers, offers that may not be valuable to you, yeah. but the idea that you must have a certain percentage to stay in the game, to get good offers. All that is manipulation from the companies to get you to take bad offers. It's just that's how it's going to be if you want to sustain in this business. You got to deal with the fact that the companies are trying to make sure that all these customers, no tip or not, get their food as fast as they can. So us drivers are the guinea pig. Like you mean the 975 that I took to someone earlier uh, around 11 o'clock that went 11 miles and they lied to me on the DoorDash app and told me it was 2.4 miles. And I followed through with it. It went into a bad area, and I ended up getting, it was all base pay, no tip. You mean that type of thing? <laughs> and trying to figure out, okay, how can we get them to take these offers? We can use the incentives and peak pay and surges and all that type of thing. Diamond areas, diamond programs. These are all ways to, to make more money for the company. And also upcoming see, legislation. See that? Yeah, and now he's going to talk about the regulations. And before he does, I'm going to just tell you. See, this, the practices that are happening on the apps by these companies, they shouldn't be able to do to us. There should be, there should be regulations and laws put in place. But the problem is you have a corrupt government system that doesn't give a shit about their citizens. They consider us all enemies, folks. The government does. So what you want doesn't matter. It's all about them. They're in bed with these corporations. But we have to try something, right? This is why this whole gig economy thing is going to implode at some point. But there's a lot of uh, variables coming in the future, folks. World wars, everything, which uh, can affect every facet of your life, and it will. So <clears throat> you have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. <laughs> as they say of mandatory hourly pay mandatory benefits every state is different but a lot of states are pushing legislation to force the companies to provide more benefits to provide more benefits that's right because people aren't uh, sick and tired of t of taking taking it on the chin but getting minimum wage put in <clears throat> uh as a as a stop gap whatever right is not the answer either it's 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 what they've wanted for for a long time because now they can control everything. They can they can manipulate and watch control what you make and also watch every other facet of your life like through surveillance and stuff. There will be a cap on earnings and more control from the companies because we will become more employees rather than independent contractors. <laughs> Ideally, they and that's coming. That's coming this summer. And it's like uh ha 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 i told you so right it, it, i mean i don't even like doing that but like it's like some of the people that thought it wasn't going to happen way do you see how wonderful it's going to be it's going to be just delicious <laughs> one thing that we should all fight for is transparency and that's it but people <laughs> want transparency hourly pay benefits all that will bite us in the butt at the end of the day but however that's where we are right now. As people become more and more desperate, they're yep. going to push lawmakers to, to make significant changes. You mean people like me, Hannibal, that, that's desperate in trying to help the community? Yes, absolutely right. Because there's, there's no, I mean, there's there's a point where you push people to the, to the brink of the, just over the edge, that people just are like, you know what, screw this, I got nothing to lose. 
we got to do something about it. Well, it's just like watching the Frankenstein movie, you know, in the movie when they were going after Frankenstein because he killed a girl, he drowned her in the lake. So the, the townspeople all grabbed all of these torches and lit them on fire and started walking in unison towards the monster. And they got him up into the castle there and they and they basically lit it on fire and they burnt him out because that's what scared the monster, right? <clears throat> So it's it's like all the gig workers are just pissed off and they're like we're not taking this shit anymore. We're going to make we're going to make change. Absolutely correct. To the gig economy. So that's the idea of can you do this long term when there's so many changes and the gig economy is so volatile right now where the apps are going to be changing algorithms by the month it seems like yep. lawmakers are going to change and make things completely different. Yep. Is that sustainable long term? Can you No, and it's not supposed to be. It was all designed to do what it's doing now, to make, to impoverish people, to make people almost like begging in a bread and soup line, saying, can I have something to eat because I have nothing? That's what it's all meant to do, folks. That's, that's the whole point. That's the whole point I made this channel, too, is to bring awareness to what was really going on behind the scenes. Because it's not just with the gig apps, folks. It's with all the corporations. Even if you're an independent business owner... They, tr they tried to shut everyone down during the pandemic. Why was Walmart and Target and, and all of these big and Whole Foods and everything all meant to stay open and Amazon, right? <clears throat> when all the little guys had to suffer. It was all about closing them down so they couldn't sustain because they knew people would not, not be able to pay the rent. And then a lot of those businesses went away, you know? But they didn't fully succeed. They thought they were going to. It's because people push back and said, hell no, we're not going to take it no more. <laughs> Lie on that to do that 10, 20 years from now. That's a question you're going to have to answer. And to those who are doing well in the gig economy, those who are able to work the apps and put in the hours, if you're able to do it, keep doing it and enjoy yourself. Have a good time. I think most of us are not able to do that. Yeah, and I would agree with you on that. I mean, if it's working for you, keep going for it. I mean, make the most money you can right now because it's not going to be around. And it's funny because Uber Lyft, uh, I'm sorry, quit working for Les's channel. I uploaded a video earlier today on that very subject about how the people that were always like bragging about how much they made and I make 400 a day and 300 a day and all this stuff. She says, well, how do you know that it's not that the bad stuff? parts of the economy is not going to come to your market, right? I mean, we saw that with Pedro. Pedro did a couple of days where he had horrible days working. He he sees the writing on the wall. He knows that he's not going to be able to do, do it for long term. Uh, I mean, in other words, it's going to get worse even in his market. And will he still be doing the apps? Who knows? I mean, he's got a whole lot of different, um, you know, avenues and choices to go. Well, a lot of us don't. We only have one or two choices. One to either still work in the apps or go homeless. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't even tell you folks how many people are, are literally sleeping and living in their cars because they lost their apartments. And you might say, well, it's their fault because they should have went and got something else. Well, there's a lot of variables to that. Why they were in that position. We can't judge that. Because they, some of them are innocently in that position, you know. But I'm for the little guy. I'm for the driver first, making sure the driver is compensated well and stays profitable. What's wrong with that? There's nothing. Because if you don't have any drivers, see, that's the problem is these companies that got so brave that they thought that they had an army of endless drivers, which they do right now because people are desperate. But if everyone's cars breaks down, everyone can't sustain themselves, then how many drivers do they think they're going to have going forward? That's why they're bringing in the autonomous vehicles, folks, because they knew that this was going to happen. They knew they were going to impoverish everyone. And then the next thing is now you're not working for the app company because they deactivated you. How do you like them apples? <laughs> it's great. It's a it's a rotating uh torture chamber of of horrors <laughs> that's why it's great to have varying opinions on this some people are saying hey listen i found this gig work and i'm not going to leave it no matter what 
some people are saying, yeah, the gig worker is fine. I'm just not making enough money. The market has changed and I have to go back and get a W-2 because <laughs> the benefits of W-2. Are and, I, and I'm in that position. I'm the one, I'm one of the ones who told you, told lots of you to go and grab. I mean, I'm still, I left Panera because Panera sucked. I'm not going to stay at a job that I don't like. If if I got there and it paid well and I liked it, yeah. So, yeah, I might move on to another 100 jobs before I find something that suits me. But I, ha I have no choice but to do what I'm doing now. I have no choice because I am in a position that I've cornered myself into. But it's not that I can't get out of it. It's just that I need to be in the right situation. I think we're all trying to find the pursuit of happiness. Aren't we, folks? <laughs> Write that in the comments. No, a lot of us are anti W two around here, but the W two obviously offers the stability of a regular paycheck. They have a lot of benefits. You have a health insurance, a retirement plan, paid time off, sick leave. As much as we talk about work life balance and gig economy, I see a lot of people in the gig economy working 40, 60 hours a week, where most people are W forty, sixty. Hannibal, they're doing. I mean, yes, they are, but there's way more doing eighty, ninety, a hundred hours. I mean, I'm doing like at least 70 a week, 70 hours. I never, I mean, and what's crazy is if I was working a W-2 job when I was an engineer, I mean, first of all, they would never give me 70 hours. But what sucks is here we are breaking our chops, going out and working all these hours, but we don't even get time and a half. I mean, at least give us 300 bucks a day if we're going to stay out 12, 13. I mean, in other words, the algorithm itself should be... Uh, Picking up the fact that there's a driver that just did 12 hours or he does it consistently to give that. I'm always for someone who's working their ass off. They should get more benefits or more pay than anyone else. A part timer should not benefit from someone who's doing full time work. In other words, oh, he's going to get a $30 order down the street. And but this guy stayed out 70 hours and this guy only worked 10 or 15. No, it's not right. That's another thing that needs to change, too to work their 40 and then that's it they go home and things are predictable with w-2 most w-2 jobs you know exactly what's happening it always depends on the current situation where are you what you value more do you value freedom or stability <laughs> with gig work you don't have a lot of benefits but you have freedom with w-2 you have you 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 do but it's a it's a smoke screen of freedom it's not actual real freedom folks because we are capped and controlled we can't do what we want to do i mean it we can't we just can't not not um not in a good way anyways a little bit more stability <clears throat> but not a lot of freedom it depends on what works for you personally I will not be doing these apps long term. Maybe I'll still have it on my phone, but as I get older, the last thing I'm going to want to do is go deliver McDonald's. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious, Hannibal. Uh, you know, that's interesting you say that because I was going to ask you if you listen to this video. And I love your video, by the way. I'm just critiquing and I'm putting my own two cents in. That's all. But I want to ask you if you can, if you could hear this to this point, write in the comments. What do you plan on doing in the future? What What's going to be your main thing? I mean, uh, if, if you're not going to be doing gig work, how are you going to still have the YouTube channel, do you think? Do you want to continue with it? Is it going to tan tangent off to something else? Like, are you going to, like, be a gaming channel? I don't know. I, I don't know what your plans are, but, like, uh, and maybe you don't have to say it either because maybe you don't want to blow the cookies right now to tell us, but that's okay. But I was just curious because it's like, you started the channel about gig work, and if you're not planning to do it, then so what are you going to, What? maybe you won't be doing YouTube? I don't know. Let me know. All right, this, is, this video is almost over, folks, and I want to thank Hannibal for doing it because he spawned my thoughts in my head to put in what I needed to put in. And, you know, it's, hey, these are my opinions too, you know, but I, I do agree with 90% of what he said here. <clears throat> it's to a point where my back is going to be hurting, my knee is going to be hurting, I'm not going to be jumping in and out of the car to, to deliver food. I think it's a young man's game. And I think for me is to try, continue to try to acquire the skills to increase my value in the marketplace to get better gigs. That's my goal. But everyone has a different goal. There are many drivers out there completely satisfied with using the apps. They are totally fine within this model. And there's nothing wrong with that. But most people realize that it's not sustainable long term. But, don't. but I but I want to say this, that if people only knew 
Because most the majority of the people are in the dock about what the what's happening behind the scenes of why all of this is happening, right? If they only knew that, they like for instance, like these companies should never have been able to hire as many people as that they wanted or needed to hire. Like there should have been a cap on that to the point that the people who are out here already aren't, can't make a good, good enough living. So if you can't sustain the driver, how can you sustain the model of the app? Whoa, well, that's easy. Just hire the entire world and become the largest employer of any, anyone on the, or on the entire planet. And, you want to talk about a non-sustainable thing. If you wa- the more and more you water down something, the less appealing it becomes to people. Even even me, like I'm looking for W two jobs to try to get away from gig apps. Of course I am, and then I'm going to use them as part time, right? But see, that's that was the whole model from the beginning is to get everyone to get all psyched up about doing the apps, and then to be you know brought down. By pulling the carpet from under their feet and say, ha ha, now you can't make any more money that you want to make. You know, people will say, well, you life is what you make it. You know, you go out and work hard and you can make a living. It's not true anymore because you, you, you're, you're beating your, your car into the ground. Your, your life is becoming unmanageable for full, full-timers because you're out working so much. So now you're less at home with your family or your animals that you have at home and whatever, and you're spending most of the time on the road. It's not, uh, it's just not sustainable. Definitely not for full timers for, for sure. But the company should not be able to pay the rates that they're paying because they're not profitable. They never were. Well, they were originally back in 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, but then they started to get really bad. And now this is where we are. We've come to this level. So problem, reaction, solution. All right, let's finish off. He's almost done. I want to thank Hannibal for doing this video. And thank you for listening, everyone. Let's finish off here. The apps always have them on. You always make a few dollars here and there. In my area of New York City, we have tons of full-time drivers. But they're working tons of hours. It's similar to <laughs> W2. In terms I know, because I'm one of them. But I don't live in New York City. I live in around the Boston area. This is a rat race. You have to take all these bad offers just to make a decent amount of money. Yep. Yeah, you're probably making a little bit more than a W-2, but you're still running your vehicle into the ground. You're still outside. Yep. As the gig apps provide lower and lower wages, you have to be outside longer and longer to yep. make the same amount of money. And, and they planned that out, Hannibal. I know it might be hard for you to understand that, but the World Economic Forum and all of those groups planned this. So this is what the model became. It was originally, it was an excellent model because it seemed all innocent, but it turned evil. Everything turned evil, folks, against the citizens. Remember that. In May in 2020, the pandemic times are over and the money that we made, it will never be as easy as it was three years ago. <laughs> but what you guys think? Put in the comments below your thoughts about gig work being sustainable for a long term. And what are your plans are? Is it just a riot amount? or you use them as a step stone for something else, put that in the comments below as well. Thank you for taking time to watch this video, and I see you guys. Okay, so that's the end of the video, folks. I Again, I want to thank Hannibal for doing his video. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I want to hear from all of you in the comments what you think, you know, going forward. Uh, you know, are you, are you looking? I know there's a lot of people on my channel uh, just in my recollection that have gotten other jobs. One of them was swimming with the fishes. Another guy's name was Paul P. I think Nate Javel might be might have looked or already has another job, but he's trying to get a car. He used to do the scooters and things like that. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that actually come and go and they just throw their hands up in the air and say, "That's it, I'm done," you know. <clears throat> but see, I had my stake in the claim because <clears throat> I've worked many many years now on the apps, right? And so. Like, I'm trying to recover money back. I want lawsuits put in. I want to recover the money back for some of us. We're never going to get it all back, folks, but we can get a small pit, pittance of it. You know, $20, $30 million each time you sue them in court, and then they send out everyone $5,000 checks. I mean, I'd like to see some of that happen more, you know, and I'd like to see real change happen. 
But until the government starts to be righteous and good, and until they stop doing the shenanigans with the corporations, we're always going to be in this boat, aren't we? All right, folks, that's all I got for you on this video. Again, thanks to Hannibal for the video, and I'll see you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.